Hello, welcome to Cherrywood Live, episode 104. Tonight I'm going to be talking about mops and scraps and other small bits of cherrywood. Um, we often hear from customers that they save every little scrap of cherrywood because it's so beautiful they can't throw anything away. So um, we're going to kind of talk about what to do with your scraps and um, grab bags and mops. Um, again, anything that I talk about at the, on the live show is on our website at cherrywoodfabrics.com. And if you go to the live tab, then you will see, um, any kind of special items that are one of a kind or special, uh, featured items are listed there. So tonight's featured item is our mops. And these are fun little um, handfuls of strips of fabric. Now this all started uh, because we cut our cherry, uh, our cherry uh, roll, cherry rolls, that's what we call them. Uh, they're like jelly rolls, but they're cherry wood. So we cut them with a die cutter by hand. So there's always waste um, on the fabric that gets cut off. And this is what it looks like when we make our cherry roll vine kit and those pieces of fabric just look so pretty. We thought, uh, let's tie them up and sell them because this is like probably over a yard of fabric right here. So because um, they're kind of random and from whatever leftover bits we have, we just cut up strips. Sometimes they have the selvage on them. Sometimes they're wider like this. Sometimes they're skinny. Um, but again, there's a lot of fabric here. Um, we uh, basically a nice handful, and um, we kind of put them together in color order. Like when we cut the strips, uh, some of these are with the fabric, so 44 inches long. Sometimes the pieces maybe are just 22 inches long, and again, don't count on them being any specific width. So just have fun and play with them. So these we call mops for obvious reasons. They look like mops. They also look like pom-poms, so you could be a Cherrywood cheerleader. And these mops, um, we have been taking to quilt shows only. So they have been a show special, something that we just have in the Cherrywood booth at quilt shows. And um, mainly because we never really know how many we're gonna have, and they always sell out at the quilt shows. And so we just haven't put them on our website. But tonight, they are on the website, and they are normally $12 for one mop, and we have them on special for $8. So eight bucks for a big handful of fabric. Again, different sizes, different widths, different lengths, but a great way to uh, really play with them. And in a bit here, I'm gonna show you what you can do with these. Um, so we have five different colorways, and um, just know that they may not be exactly what you see here. The colors will vary. This is our uh, spicy velvet. So it's a combination of a couple of our, our um, color ways. We have blacks and neutrals and grays. We have a bright bunch where we, and sometimes we're um, kind of cutting up things, especially for mops that maybe we can't sell or we just don't have enough of to sell. So they may end up in a mop. We have um, light colors. This one happens to be mostly blues and greens. 
Isn't that lovely? But it may um, it'll just be light colors. And then we have random ones. So you could get darks and lights and all sorts of colors. But yes, these are all strips. Oh, here's another random one right here. This one has a little red in it. So sometimes they are with the fabric, 44 inches, and sometimes they're 24 inches or 22 inches if we cut up a um, fat quarter. So what can you do with these mops? Well, let me move some of them and I will show you some pieces that we have played with. So the first, um, one of the places that we got a lot of excite excitement and feedback from was when I went to a Stitches show, which is um, a, started out as a knitting and crocheting show and they're moving into quilting as well. So we have the sample um, hanging up and of course this, the crocheters just had to touch it because what we did was had somebody crochet from the mop strips and she used a very large needle. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, this one is knit. We also have her crocheted one. So some of the strips had to be cut um, a little thinner because um, you could, you know, some could be this wide. So you probably could cut these in half to make two strips. But um, you can crochet and knit with strips of fabric. It's got a really cool stretch. And um, one person, um, you can sew the ends end to end to just keep getting a long roll. Or I believe in this one, she tied a tiny little knot. So as the color changed, there's a little knot tying it together. And then here is a little coaster. So yeah, you can knit and crochet if you um, are inclined to do that. Or you can make these wonderful fabric bowls. And uh, these are the clothesline fabric bowls. And these strips are just perfect to wind around, around the clothesline. This happens to be made by Heather Thormanson, who is like the queen of baskets. And she will take these uh, strips from the mops. See, some of them are shorter, but this, it doesn't matter. In fact, the shorter they are, the more color change you'll get. And the fabric is simply wrapped tightly around the clothesline, and it's a cotton clothesline. And there's a specific weight that she really likes um, that you're able to sew through. So once you get the cord all covered with jerry wood then you sew it together on your sewing machine and you're basically sewing a coil in the middle and it the size of the size and uh, shape of your coil in the middle is determines the size of your bowl so as you can see here she put together a bunch of really muted brownish colors so it really looks like a raffia bowl um, just think if it had some fun colors um, yeah, great way to use up strips from the mops. And um, I have a couple other samples to show you of things that I've done. But um, I wanted to, I sat down with my friends Shannon and Jason. They are the Sheba guys. And um, you've probably heard of him, heard of them, because they are um, very energetic and they're very fun and they just make me laugh. So they, um, We've connected a couple years ago, and um, they are now Cherrywood Ambassadors because, well, when you watch the video, you'll see why, but um, they designed a vest. I'll have some better pictures in the video. It's called the Sashiko Vest, number one, and they are Sashiko kings and queens, whichever term you want to use, but they just came out with a new book all about Sashiko stitching which is that big stitch. In fact, I'm going to show you an image here of one of their pieces. So this is Sashiko stitching. And what you see here is you'll see some little um, green polka dots. That is just for marking. So they have marked the grid work onto the cherry wood. And then all of that white stitching is two um, thicknesses of thread 
and they have a special sashical thread that they sell on their website. And look at that just amazing detail. So I am excited to try Sashiko. And this is part of the vest that uh, we have kits for. They designed a vest using all cherry wood and um, showed it off in our booth. And they, they've shown it on, uh, they do really cool fashion shows at the Stitches events. And um, this vest was on the runway and it was just gorgeous. So we have the pattern for the Sashiko vest, and um, that's a PDF download file. That is on our website. It's uh, on the live tab right now. And the kits, you get all of these beautiful colors against a beautiful um, indigo background. And that's what all the patches are made for in the background for the Sashiko stitching. Um, again, you'll see a better pictures of this vest in the video coming up. But normally these kits are $100 and for live viewers they are 10% off. So you can get a kit for $100. Now I should note that we have two different sizes of kits. So uh, one kit covers sizes small through large and the other kit um, goes from extra large to 5X. So make sure you pick out the right kit. But both kits are 10% off tonight and that is the Sashiko vest. So I'm going to show the video now of Shannon and Jason in our chat, and um, they could talk for hours. So this is the edited version, but it's a lot of fun, so I hope you enjoy. Oh, and I'll show you more stuff afterwards, so stick around. So hi, guys. How are you doing? Well, I just want to chat with you guys a little today because you guys are um, using cherry wood in your projects and you're such great advocates for it and you have new stuff happening and um, yeah, I'll just kind of let you go. Like, what do you like about cherry wood? Oh, what's there not to like? Well, yeah. the, I mean, it, the, the first thing that I think all of us are drawn to, the first two things mm -hmm. are the color right and the texture yes. i mean mm -hmm. there's no there, there's there's no comparable product out there on the market that has that same feel to it right mm -hmm. and that finished look with cherry wood mm -hmm. and so that's the thing that like got us all yeah it wasn't really hot and bothered under yeah. The color about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's not a flat color at all there's there right. there are really slight variations in it which just gives it a really nice life right. as it, as you're working with it, it, it you don't get that same heavy, you know, just blue or just yellow. Right. It's, 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 there's something more in there. But just, I mean, the, the, the feel, the feel of the fabric, period. Right. Because we use mm -hmm. it for garments and for, uh, you know, projects like the ones you see mm -hmm. behind us. Yeah. And so it's, we use it for everything. It really is the, the one of the fabrics that you can, mm -hmm. you can cross all different types of maker barriers with. So it doesn't yeah. just have to be quilting or, we started using it for needle punch, for right. God's sakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's it's dense and it's heavy yeah. and it holds the thread in place. Yeah, so, uh, and yeah, then... Mm -hmm. um, why don't you guys um, tell me a little bit about what you guys do because you've got your fingers in all sorts of stuff. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> why we're late You're in everything. Yeah, in everything. <laughs> um, so we started out uh, 12 years ago. Something like that. Uh, doing crochet and knitwear design. Right. Mm -hmm. And moved into, we had always wanted to do... Ten books later, mm -hmm. ten books later, um, our new Sashiko and Boro book is coming out, <laughs> which is the stuff, that, the stuff that you see us, that you see behind us right now. Right. You know, it's, um, historically we were both sewers. Right. Um, you know, my my background is in the theater and uh, theater. In the theater. theater. And uh, if you have a degree, so, it's called theater. It's called theater. <laughs> E, not E R. R, -E. R -E. Say, how do you spell that? Yeah, yeah. You paid for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you paid for it, it's D-R-E. Um, so, so, no, we, so, so you know, I, I I grew up, you know, even from a child, my, my mother was a costume. Was a costumer in the theater. So you know, I grew up making stuff. You know, I, you know, there, there there were sewing machines around the house. There were needles. There were you know, there, there was just stuff to be done, and you know. <clears throat> slave labor so you know mom would hand us some and say okay start sewing <clears throat> just needs a button so we we would 
foot and put all those on. So that's how I started when I was very young, actually in sewing. And then, uh, then Shannon's family as well, that they were, uh, they were quilters and sewists mm -hmm. and made clothes. They were hill people. We were. They're, hill, they're Northern Appalachian hill people. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandma was a hill witch. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I mean, like, no kidding. And uh, she and her sisters are the ones that taught me how to quilt and how to sew, mm -hmm. um, crochet, knit. Right. All the things. How to cane a chair. How to gut a fish. Wow. Everything. You didn't gut a fish. We didn't gut fish. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I meant cane to Cane a chair. Cane a chair. Yeah, yeah we have a chair that needs caned right now. Um, but uh, yeah, and so we, I mean, we have a, a diverse background just of what we do anyway. And then on top of that, we get bored. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> because we have so much time, you know, you know well, no, to be but, bored. But we start doing, so, like, do. like, like right now, I mean, we worked on crochet pretty intensely. We did, we turned out book. I mean, yeah. 10 books, 10? Ten? Ten, 10 books, yes. 10 books right in a row. Boom, boom. I mean, every year we were working on a book and they got progressively bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> until the last one was Complete Crochet Course and it was, you know, literally the tome mm -hmm. on crochet. Right. And uh, Jason did all the photography and the graphic design, the layout, and did the whole packaging for that book. And by the time we were done, we were like, I got nothing left <laughs> to, to say. say. I mean, mm -hmm. just that was kind of it. I yeah. mean, we've done the design books and we've done the things in that. And we were just dying to get into something new. And that's how we fell into Sashiko. Right. Was mm -hmm. uh, coming up with some new classes to teach. And uh, Sashiko is the stitching that you see here behind us that we're doing. <laughs> that's this and on this dress form. This is all cherry wood. This yeah. is all cherry wood. Yeah, this, the, the whole yeah. panel, which I don't know how much is, you can see. If you can is, see some of it there. Cherry yeah. wood. No, I, have I seen that one in person or this is a new uh, no, no, this not is, in person. I think is, you've seen a photo these of it. These are the but... first time anybody's seeing these. These mm -hmm. are from yeah. our new book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. So, but we kind of fell into, into Sashiko kind of accidentally. <laughs> we were looking for uh, hand sewing classes that we could teach at events so that we wouldn't have to have machines there and that we mm -hmm. could just pick up a little kit and get started. Right, it started with crazy quilting because crazy that's, that's, quilting. That's, that's something you can definitely pick up a couple pieces and you, you just yeah. sew in. And there was some obscure reference on a website that said that crazy quilting somehow resulted from people seeing boro patching, like mm -hmm. this type of stuff, at the World Exhibition yep. in Philadelphia. Philadelphia in 1865. The new Japanese uh, period had just been opened right, up. Right, right, right. Japan had just been opened. Oh, so the rest of the so world, because they were these... politically, their, their borders were closed. No one could come in. No one could go out for mm -hmm. years. Yeah. So, so now, now all of this, you know, there then there was painting and there was pottery and ceramics and and they have they have a, a form of pottery repair they do where they actually put gold in the cracks. Oh. And that repairs the yeah, and so they re, they consider repairs to be more valuable than the original piece, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so and then they had mended textiles, mended textiles. It said mended textiles, and they went Japanese mended textiles, and so it had a word. Twelve there. more browser windows later, it had a little window, right? It said the intricate the intricate patchwork of Japanese mended textiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's anecdotal evidence that it was people who saw those that took that and that inspired crazy quilts. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole thing happened. And now it turned into our entire book. Right. This uh, is the, we found the, we book. found the, uh, the uh, Musee Museum in Japan that has all of Chizuburo Tanaka's Boro pieces and Sajiko pieces that he collected from all over Japan and saved from being just destroyed. Destroyed. They were just going away. Forgotten, I think, is a better word. Yeah, it's a better word. Forgotten. Forgotten. And uh, so we started looking at that exhibit, and we were just blown away by the textiles and the stitching, and yeah, it, it was amazing. And we we fell in love with it, and we started playing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. And our agent saw something that we posted online <laughs> and said, "You just know a that snapshot of something." Said, I, I you know that new garment yeah. design book that, that we just submitted to this publisher? Yeah, we're pulling that. We're pulling that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, what? So what? And she said, no, you're doing this. You're mm -hmm. doing this right now. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And yep. I think then that was the same time, that same weekend, we got a phone call from Benjamin at Stitches mm -hmm. that wanted us to revise one of our weekend uh, camp courses. Mm. And we said, yeah, we've got this new thing that we do. And we sent them a photo of what we were working on. And they said, yes, let's do it. And that's it. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. that's really how we got yeah, into that's it. Everything and the first time, and we were just using uh, like dense quilting cottons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we're using a lot of just the, the 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 mainstream commercial stuff. And the first time we touched your fabrics, I mean, we were already using cherry wood a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, 
but we hadn't had a few. chance to do a lot of sewing because we were working on other projects. Mm -hmm, right. And I was just like, wait, we got to do this because mm -hmm. the, what you use is a very sharp needle and uh, cotton 12 white thread from our RFL collection. Yes. Um, and that's what you're seeing there is right. this, this cotton 12 white thread. This is all cherry wood. And the stitches on. stand out so beautifully on Boy, do they pop out. this fabric. It, it the just dense, out. almost felted mm -hmm. structure, that peached fabric that mm -hmm. you knew is just... When you put Beautiful stitches part. into that, they just stand. Be oh, we want this to stand out, right? Right. And uh, and boy, do, boy, do they! Because yeah. it's just a running stitch. There's no back stitches in it. It's all running stitch. You just one so it's all across. just a forward running stitch that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bizarre. I know. I know. You look really. Yeah. It's all forward motion. There's no. There's no backward stitches in that anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and so when you do that, it lays beautifully on the surface of the fabric, and stays nice and snug in there because the dense fabric holds onto the thread. So for us, it was a given right. that, yeah. it would, that it would end up getting a huge feature in the book, and it does. Yes, and it does. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and also in our classes, when we teach these classes, this is what we mm -hmm. um, definitely recommend that they start with because it's a dense, dense beautiful, woven. beautiful dark blue that really echoes that traditional indigo look. Well, they're, they're also strong colors, so any thread in the, that you're using is going to pop right. out from behind that. When, when you start using things with, 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 with their, that are really mottled colors or things that, that have patterns on them, the stitches tend to disappear Which behind that is it. a place, but for beginners, and if you mm -hmm. want a classic look like this. Well, this, this is classic. I mean, look at that. Sashiko. It is. And you can see mm -hmm. this down here with the purple, with the way those, those uh, yeah. we'll, we'll send you pictures of these. Mm -hmm. so you yeah. can put those so you get close up. Get close ups of them. But this is all mm -hmm. dense. <laughs> that's, all, that's all thread. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's yeah. all thread. Yeah. yeah. Our first editor looked at it and thought that this was fabric that we bought somewhere. That it was yeah, printed it was that way. Like printed so fabric. Printed and we're just like, no. no <laughs> that's we all. did that. We did that. We did that. Uh, this is using all cherry wood. Mm -hmm. And they are scrappy, wonky log cabins. So it's kind of an abstract take on uh, log cabin blocks. Yeah, okay. Using all cherry wood colors. And specifically, this is our Scrappy Wonky Pride mm -hmm. log cabin uh -huh. blocks, our progressive pride rainbow uh, uh, that we added in. So it has the traditional uh, six, six striped rainbow flag. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Indigo and violet. And then it has the black and the brown for the uh, BIPOC and black and people of color community. And also has the lavender that we added in. There is the blue and pink for the transgender mm -hmm. uh, community and lavender for the non-binaries. It was, we've been trying to put our work more into um, things that do have that meaning for us right now. Mm -hmm. um, with, um, with everything that's going on in the world right mm -hmm. now, um, we need those of us who do have platforms and can be visible need to be visible and we mm -hmm. were passing mm -hmm. for a very long time and i was certainly <clears throat> passing for a very long time i could very much pose as a cis gay male mm -hmm. um and get away with it i mean you saw me yeah. Yeah. and you know i wore flamboyant clothes but that was about it right uh, the true uh gender queer non-binary person inside of me um, mm -hmm. I always just hid because I was afraid of what was going to happen to me when I went out there. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we stopped that, <laughs> obviously, and, uh, and really started thinking how we could use our platform to uplift the voices of other communities as well as our own community. And then we started saying, mm -hmm. hey, we have a voice too right. mm -hmm. that has valid things that need to be said right now that people need to know what's happening because of the oppression that's happening from our government with our community mm -hmm. with the lgbtqia community and so a lot of our pride it started with the pride quilt block that we did mm -hmm. right that we did from cherry wood and that's where all this started right, right. Mm -hmm. wow. um and it was that one little quilt block that i just kind of went let's do a whole quilt like that mm -hmm. And so we now have, you just sent us the fabric for this. Yep, there, there's a full-on. We now have a full-on pride quilt that's going to be happening um, sometime. Sometime in the very near, near, near future. So this is very, finished. Soon as this is, and yep, we're going to use the scraps from that to finish this one, the Scrappy Wonky oh. Log Cabin. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're making at the same time. And we also plan on doing an abstract piece right. based on that. So it really... One, we don't like wasting anyway. And this right. whole, the whole thing of studying mm -hmm. Sachiko and Boro really taught us about no waste right. Right, and the value of using, as you know, they, they have a saying about using fabric if it's as big as three beans. Three beans. 
It was big enough to hold three, three beans, beans then, then that it was big enough to keep and then use on and something. And use again. Right. Okay. So we were like, okay, three soybeans. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's probably what they were planting was soybeans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, right. so you take three beans and if you can, and that's a pretty small piece of fabric. Yeah. And so, and certainly with cherry wood, I mean, we keep all of our fabric scraps. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We've, you've shown us your fabric scraps and I've drooled over mm -hmm. them. Um, we have everything from, you know, little bins like, like this. We that have are these <laughs> scraps. <laughs> They're different sizes. Three you know. beans will not fit in this. Just, just FYI, this is not three beans worth. But we but use these. But we use them anyway. Everything from the little king tiny ones are about the size of your thumbnail um, to, to to actual strips of, you know, maybe, maybe which like is where you inches. came in with this last batch that you sent us. Mm -hmm. Had, oh my God, so many scraps of it. It was. So, well, I, I mean, grab some of you. I mean, it was exciting. It, it was exciting that we got the actual yardage. Like you sent us, like. Uh, I think quarter yards and half yards. Yeah, I think so. Um, to do this quilt. But you also sent us like strips and yeah. thicker strips. Aren't they fun? And they really are. Uh, I took those strips and sewed them together into one big piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. And I think I sent you a text with it and you said, so what are you going to make? And I'm like, Pfft. who knows? I mean, knows? I just liked the way they looked yeah. together as a piece of fabric. We have a completely abstract piece mm -hmm. um, quilt that we've just, we just sent yeah, to just, just adding to just adding right pieces now here and there. It's way too big for our bed. It's so, almost a car cover at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and so mm -hmm. I know some of them ended up being a being uh, panels in that because we were laying them down not really as binding strips but as ways to even out the edges of some of the rough ones. Sure. And I would lay those down and sew them on it so that there was a straight edge there, and then fold you know iron that out, and it just made a really beautiful line. And I did some herringbone stuff with it. And uh, it's just, it was just playing with the scraps and not really thinking about what I have to do, mm -hmm. and what I have to make. And it was just us putting colors together and fabrics together. And cherry would just lend itself to that so well, because again, you don't have to worry about, when we're doing this stuff, we don't worry about the bias. Mm -hmm, right. Or the grain. We just- Right side, wrong side. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and it's, you're, you're able to maneuver the pieces in, in without thinking. And the right. idea with doing the abstract the way that we do it is to not really think about what you're creating in the end. Mm -hmm. but just grab a piece and say, oh, I need this shape to fill out here. And so put something there. There's some thought to color. Mm -hmm. um, and that, the advantage of you sending us so many, here, I did find some of these scraps. Mm -hmm. um, you sent us strips like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to think about, oh, what color should we use? What colors do we have that we can use? Yeah. And it's don't just, you think all the colors, they kind of go together. I mean, they, they do. do. They, they, they do. Yeah. You, they're, they're, there's nothing that doesn't fit well with yeah. another one, even if it's w way on the, the other side of the, the, either the value spectrum or the actual color spectrum, they still fit together as, as pieces. And I just think that you're, the saturation of the dyes that you get. Right. Mm -hmm. Just even that piece that you've got there behind you like that. I mean, just mm -hmm. th th there are color combinations that you don't really think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, a lot of times you just grab it and you, I mean, that, that color, th those colors of green that you like so much, this one, mm -hmm, that greenish yeah. yellow, it blended so well with so many mm -hmm. different colors. Right. It's mm -hmm. a neutral. It's, it's something that, yeah. that, that you wouldn't expect. There, there's exactly. This, there's this really deep red Kind of a well, this purple. This yeah. is almost like uh, yeah. it reminds me of those uh, those oh. popsicles we used to get when we were kids. The grape oh. ones. Mm -hmm. Grape ones. And, yeah, it's uh, a little bit of red, red in a it. A little red in it, you know. Yeah, yeah like yeah. like uh, they didn't taste grape. like grape. They just tasted like mm -hmm. purple. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what this reminded me of. And that with this. But we when we were looking, I was like, this will never go together. And you just laid it right on top and, and it was beautiful. It was stunning. Yeah. And you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does act as a neutral. And so, mm -hmm. so many of the colors, you don't have to think in traditional color palettes anymore. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, yeah. I kind of hate doing that now that I've gotten into the habit of cherry wooding the hell out of a project. <laughs> you know? It's a verb now, cherry wooding. Well, right, it is. It, it, really totally, is. it totally is. We totally cherry wooded that project. And I won't put away my cherry wood projects that I'm doing. So there's a pile of cherry wood fabric over there in the corner yeah. of the cutting table. No. It's all scraps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's stuff that I go over and I just grab mm -hmm. and I, and I literally hack piece. off a piece mm -hmm. yeah. and take it over yeah. when I need a fill spot. So it just really, I, I think it gave us the freedom mm -hmm. totally. to yeah. do things that I'm not an abstract person. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. 
no, yeah. type A. Yeah, when it came to mm -hmm. garment design, yeah, we both are just like, this is the way it's done. Okay. And all the lines are like this and very mm -hmm. clean and structured. Yeah. And getting into abstract, I was just like, oh, I got nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I was worried about patterns in the fabric and the colors and, and mm -hmm. with cherry wood, like, you know, of course there's no patterns, but mm -hmm. it works together so well. And again, you don't have to, I, we don't worry about bias and grain. Um, and, Even and, when I make clothing with cherry wood, I put straight a grain up and down or vertical. Yeah, right. It yeah. just works. Mm -hmm. The vest that works. we did, the vest, yeah. Sasha Go vest, number, number one, one, the first piece that we did in cherry wood. So mm -hmm. the, the um, yeah, so this is done in a really traditional uh, Japanese vest style um, for the construction. Mm -hmm. And it is made in two big panels of cherry wood, mm -hmm. or three rather, one, two, and mm -hmm. then the third one on the back. Yep. And then the real sizing, I mean, there is some sizing that happens in those, but those are just straight rectangle cuts. Yeah. Um, the sizing comes in here, mm -hmm. with where you place this for the armhole depth and how wide you make this panel. Yeah, that's ingenious to, um, easy to fit anybody. It really is. Right. Yeah. And that was, that was the, the idea. That was the idea with it. And then we mm -hmm. put the measurements in for how to cut everything. And you can see it is stitched to within an inch of its life. Everything right, yeah. that you see, every pattern you see on that, all of that is is, is all uh, hand stitched because mm -hmm, this yeah. is cherry wood again. So yep. yeah. And those stitches oh. stand out beautifully. And it's kind of a combination of your Boro and Sashiko, right? Because yes, it is. Boro yeah. and Sashiko. This is a modern take on Boro. Mm -hmm. The Boro that you see here in the background is a uh, raw edge Boro. Yeah. And so it is going to be more, um, it's going to have frayed edges. Mm -hmm. Once, this is this from is a, a thinner uh, quilting cotton because yeah. it frays easier. Cherry wood. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fray. It does not, does not yeah. fray. We, 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 we have not had that problem with unless it at you all. Do, yeah. unless, or, well, we haven't had it been able to do it either. Well, right, yeah. That's true. <laughs> we tried. Um, unless, unless you take a shoe brush to it. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. The type of brush you use for the bottom of uh, suede shoes, like ballroom yeah. dancers use. Mm -hmm. You yeah. take that to the edge of it and uh, distress it, and it stays perfectly. Mm -hmm. It gives it a really nice distressed look. FYI, it does, it's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But, but uh, yeah, what we did is this is all folded under, and Jason did it all with monofilament. So uh, Boro, Boro is a patchwork mm -hmm. um, type of, uh, of bending mm -hmm. that would use this to cover holes. And mm -hmm. what we did is we studied, you should come into camera. Oh yeah, I was just- We studied, um, mm -hmm. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pieces. We did, yeah. Of traditional yeah. Uh, Boro and Sashiko patchwork pieces. And the, we kind of came up with this underlying theme mm -hmm, yeah. a method when you start looking at it you, you you see how everything started with a much larger piece of fabric and then a piece mm -hmm. of it got worn here and here so they then they put another piece on there and then a piece on that and generally those pieces would wear down again because mm -hmm. if, if that's where the you know, something was going to be worn it's going to wear in a certain area right. so the, you know like an edge of that would wear down so they'd patch that again and again and again so we kind of came up with a modern mm -hmm aesthetic a modern mm -hmm. quilting aesthetic to it and that was really who saw this first was the modern quilt guild yeah uh, the local modern quilt guild was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and uh and then uh so you can see we did layer some of the patches uh oh, this, this one's layered yeah. too that's mm -hmm. two different patches mm -hmm. of cherry there so again it's not this is not exact boro right um it but is a, just a modern boro mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, you know, an artistic taking artistic license with it. And again, talking about color palettes, mm -hmm. look yeah. at those colors together. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, the, the, the chartreuse again. With it's with, a little bit darker version of that chartreuse mm -hmm. um, with, with a hot pink, a hot pink, and a deep purple, and purple, mm -hmm. right? And it just and on that works. indigo background. Indigo kind of holds everything together because it really everything. does. Yeah, that mm -hmm. base. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's like everything. cooking. I mean, it's like making a sauce. Yeah, it really is having you have your base, mm -hmm. and then you add something that has the acidity to it, and you add something that has a little bit of brightness beyond that, and then you have to have something a little bit creamy to mellow everything out. And I, I would say this indigo is definitely the base. Yes. It yeah, is the it's, base. it's what everything is built off of is, is the indigo. Because most of the, the Sashiko that we saw the, uh, and the Boro pieces mm -hmm. were indigo dyed. Yeah. Oh, sure. So that's kind um, of... Maybe that's what the, the, 
indigo actually has a lot of it has antibacterial properties. It um, is fire re retardant. Yeah, fire retardant. Um, it uh, it uh, antifungal re re repels <laughs> insects. Insects hate the stuff. Yeah, so it's it it, it was used for a reason, not ju also, not just because it made this beautiful blue color, right. but it actually did help strengthen all of the the, the fibers themselves. Once it soaks in, it strength. They were using like rainy fiber and, and hemp, uh, and, hemp and, and, and really uh, really loose woven fibers. This and then they they they, then they would then use the uh, the indigo to to, to help it. to help strengthen build the, the fabric from this thing. Yeah, and so and so you're. I mean, you know, this this the aesthetic with the the dark blue with the white stitching on it really is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what people. It's it's become my thing <laughs> of wanting to do, and so yeah, I've had to get into a little bit, yeah. a little bit different type I stuff. I have a question about that circle right there. Yes, this so we're <laughs> stitching through the red and the orange, and the magenta and the blue all at once. It, it it took a lot longer f for that than, than it did for like the well, because they're tiny panels. stitches. Yeah, I mean yeah. some of these are like a uh, quarter of an inch and eighth of an inch long. Yeah, Shiko yeah. is not this. Yeah, yeah. Sa 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 Shiko is a running stitch that's done like this. Mm -hmm. and you wear a thimble, mm -hmm. a palm thimble right here. Mm -hmm. It's a very long needle, and you push push it through the fabric. You, by you going use like your this. hand to actually you hold your your fingers like this, and then and then you. You've got your, 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 your like fabric this. squished up here, and then you just pull it through, and then once you get to the, 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 the end, you pull everything through. Pull all the thread through the fabric. All the way through, and then you turn, and then you go back the, the, the other direction, and you just keep doing back and forth. So the smaller the stitches, the thicker the fabric, the tougher it got to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but again, the fact that the stitches didn't like soak right into the fabric, yeah, they you know really what I mean stand by soaking out. the fabric mm -hmm. instead of sitting up here on top where they just go like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, and you want that sometimes. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, the fact that we could make this, you want it to lay down. The fact that we could make this stand out with mm -hmm. those teeny tiny short stitches through all that was beautiful. Yeah, and um, I've noticed like if you have to unstitch something or pick stitches out. The, mm -hmm. It doesn't leave a hole in the fabric. You can kind of scratch the fibers back. You can. The, you, you you can. Yeah. 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 I mean, we were just talking about that this morning in, in the uh, Clover. Uh, we did a live stream on Clover with Punch Needle. Mm -hmm. And so Punch Needle for this, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. you can, the, you can that pull can be that a really right back out hole, and so. then just scratch it on the top, scratch it on the bottom, and mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. fixed. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, we were talking a lot about how tough and and you know tight weave of it but it still has a drape to it it's oh yeah oh. totally yeah totally. yeah i mean, I, you, I mean yeah. even that that's a double layer that's oh, a bag yeah. it's a bagged quilt right mm -hmm. right so, so this it's, is... a, it's a wall hanging but it's the it's double layer mm -hmm. everything's been done through two layers mm -hmm. wow. so if and you so see us stitching through here we stitch through one two three layers there it's three layers there. four layers four layers through here it's indigo on the front and the back mm -hmm. yeah and then the two layers were quilted together. It's called Shonai Sashiko, oh. where you quilt two layers of fabric together. And that's what we did here. And uh, it just, it, yeah, it was flawless for using mm -hmm. for that type of stuff. Right. And it moves. It does. I mean, it, even this, with mm -hmm. two layers of that, you yeah. can see how that's moving. You can it still, still get has. ripples from it. Mm -hmm. Two layers mm -hmm. and all that stitching. Yeah. And this, you've seen this on the runway, how the bottom of this just it yeah. flips and moves and flies. Yeah. Like when, when she moves, even even with these heavy lapels, because these lapels are doubled. These these are doubled as well. Yep. Oh my god. Doubled and then stitched through. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's uh, it's a length like this, folded under and then top sewn, both directions. Oh wow. And it's still when she would walk down the runway, the front of this just mm -hmm. blew open like right. this as she walked. Mm -hmm. The first time that happened, like we cried. <laughs> there were tears in our eyes. It was just such a beautiful thing. So yeah, Jerry would we again it crosses all the barriers, uh mm -hmm. the borders between the different crafts that we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh garments, like cool. quilting, art project. I mean, because we don't always make something like that big strip of fabric that I did just taking the mops and sewing those together in strips. Mm -hmm. I have it may just end up getting hung on the back of a chair that way and just looked at forever. There's a curtain rod back there in the back that covers up that um, storage area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this hangs on the on the finial on the end of it. Yeah, it works as a big tassel, right? 
It's oh, it gorgeous. totally does, yes. And I keep wanting to make it into something, but thank goodness you sent me more so I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to make it into anything. No. <laughs> but sometimes the things that we're making with Jerry Wood are mm -hmm. just are what they are because right. they are. They're not mm -hmm. anything. Well, I think everybody needs to give themselves permission to do that. Right, right. No, not everything has to be planned out in advance 12 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. Just you get some fabric, look at it, and then just, just start playing with it and see and what, what it's it going to do. Yeah. And I think those, those mops mm -hmm. and the uh, grab bags that you do. Yes, mm -hmm. those grab bags um, are brilliant. Grab bags are awesome for Sasha and If you for need Moro. a certain color, um, and you, you may not like yellow, so you're not going to have yellow in your stash. Right, but you yeah. Grab bag, and you've got these all these colors, and just a couple. Of gonna, you've been, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to take inspiration because you have all the colors. Right? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely for us, I mean, we've talked. This is the way it was with yarn too. If a yarn company wanted us to use their yarn for our projects, I can't. I almost can't look at a wall of neutral yarn, mm -hmm. and think about how amazing it'll look in in red. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I can, but it takes a little yeah. bit more. So when yeah. I'm in, sometimes I'm not in that creative space, though. Mm -hmm. And we have to go, okay, what will this look like if we do it? Reset, this? reset. It's, it's easier for us if we can just walk over and look at a wall of yarn that at least has a color card or something or a little bit of everything and say, that's the color that we want. That's the, that color inspires me to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely with, with these, with the, the grab bags mm -hmm. and with the mops, the mops. it gives you freedom to play and to explore new colors and new new types of construction. I think we did that one woven piece out of it. Oh yeah, we did, that's right. We, yeah. we, did, a, mm -hmm. we did a woven piece out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, because you don't have to finish the ends, you don't have to make bias strips mm -hmm. yeah. out of the whole thing. You just cut it off and if it, at the end of it, you can just go through and trim things up with a pair of ductile scissors. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it mm -hmm. just, <laughs> it's just, it's just a beautiful, easy medium to work with, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah that you know i kind of looked at it as a base fabric more than anything when i first started but then it just took over and became center stage yeah entire pieces i mean you mm -hmm. see yeah <laughs> tori ended up being featured very heavily in our book too this isn't the only piece that has some in it yeah tell us about your new book it, um, it's called uh boro and sashiko harmonious, harmonious imperfection, imperfection. Um, and it's it's available now, uh, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, indie bookseller. <laughs> it, it is the book that, that basically teaches you all of the stitching techniques to do with this, as well as how to do you know, the, the actual boro patching that, that we were talking patching. about. And then the uh, projects. The, the, the projects go with it. There are nine projects in the book, um, starting with some really basic pillows and bags, and then building up into actual garments. So yeah, it's good for beginners who have never done such a course. Yes. Yeah. The idea is to start at the beginning and work their way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, it very much is a, I mean, you know, we're teachers. We've been teaching for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so we, we definitely write our books with a teaching mm -hmm. slant. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do, we always try to write our books uh, as if we were teaching a series of courses. Right. A series mm -hmm. of classes on that subject. Mm -hmm. So they'll start right off them getting the book with a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. um, of Sasha Cohen Boro and where it came from, we really feel strongly about adding context to the content that right. we're about to do. This, 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 yeah, it's, it's a very important history that, that, that created this particular art form. So people, people can look at it and see it's beautiful, but they don't, if they don't understand why it was built the way it was, it, it doesn't make any sense. If you lose that context when you start creating, Mm -hmm. um, spe specifically crafts like this mm -hmm. um, and art forms like this, you yeah. lose a lot of that connection to the original folks who did it. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then you lose your connection to why you're actually sitting there doing it. Mm -hmm. And even just uh, practically, yeah. forgetting what Sashiko and Bora were for, you don't make smart decisions about how to use it later. Right, uh -huh. because it is it is for reinforcing and mending and beautifying. Certainly, can use it just as a beautiful quilting top stitch or just as a decorative stitch on a jacket, like you've seen our jacket and our shirts and stuff like that mm -hmm. that we do yeah. it on yeah. and jeans, just for the heck of it. Um, but you have to make choices based on the fact that okay, it was used for this. Should I use it for this? Okay, so you make mm -hmm. thread and fabric choices based on knowledge of what it was used for originally, and uh, then you start really thinking like a designer. And right. moving that way. So we start with that and, and then, then describe we, the tools. The tools. And then you will, 
we get your hands moving, we actually teach you how to hold the needle, how to put on that, that right. thimble, and actually do the movement moving through the fabric. Because it is very other... unique. It is oh. very unique the way you, that this has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you were to do this in, in a hoop, you know, the hoops are only, only so big, so there's no way I could have done the, you know, this entire piece right. with a single running stitch, which is the way it has to be done. Uh -huh. So it has to be done with you, you know, it, it's just loose fabric in, in your hands. So you're holding and tensioning with your so, hands. So you, you, you have to learn how to tension your fabric and how to get the needle to go up and down properly and then pull through and then go, and go back And this is what, partially what you can see here is the quilt from the book. And this quilt um, mm -hmm. was all like, these are, you can't see it because of the printed fabric, but this is long quilted this way. Okay. And then quilted that way. And those are all long running stitches. And then we've yep. got the Lotus or lotus are, uh, oh, you can't even see yeah, that. There's, see there's that. a lotus pattern that we mm -hmm. put into yeah. it. But all of it was oh, cool. mm -hmm, um, yeah. our abstract interpretation of a lotus. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. And it, um, so this is, you know, the equivalent to kind of like big stitch quilting. If yeah. you're an Americana mm -hmm. quilter, yeah, mm -hmm. they would talk about that. Uh, in India, there's different forms of kanta. kanta. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is about making the stitch a certain way. Right. You okay. know, for big stitch quilting, most of what we do is this, mm -hmm. right. or do a rocker stitch with a bigger eyed needle. Right. Um, where you use a 12 weight thread like this. Mm -hmm. This is doubled 12 weight thread. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. it's two strands of, of thread that makes every line that you see. Which is one of the reasons it pops out so well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and it's done in a continuous running stitch all the way to the end until basically you're holding so much fabric you can't hold it anymore. You push the needle all the way through and then pull the fabric back over the thread mm -hmm. and even everything out and then pick up and start, you know, the, right. the, the rest of the line. So um, it's, there's, there's it's a unique, it's a unique movement. Mm -hmm. It's a unique way of making the stitches. We walk everybody through that in the book. And then we give you a full stitch dictionary after that of, right. of a bunch of different, I think they're... I don't remember how many. 40 plus, uh, 39 or 40 different stitches, stitch patterns. Mm -hmm. And they're ranked, they're, from. they're put in the book in order of difficulty. Right. So you so start with these and practice these. Some and then of these, the, 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 you know, this, this particular one, which is way down early. in the book. <laughs> yeah, it's way, way down there far over in the book. This, this is like uh, this, this hemp leaf. Hemp leaf, it's, it's one of my favorite ones to do, but it is a bear to draw out. Yeah, <laughs> like we teach this, <laughs> we, we teach just this. Mm -hmm form okay. in a class yeah just just that, just that one yeah, yeah. One, it once it's drawn out it's simple to, to actually do the stitching but since but you you really have to take your time to draw it out properly so we teach the order of operation because there's a way that you make them as well you mm -hmm. don't just take do people do pick up and start making a pattern right there's a way that you have to do it there's an mm -hmm. order to it and there's a way the stitches have to meet a certain way and there, there are reasons for that when you think back that it's Mm -hmm. for mending mm -hmm. and, and for that, strengthening fabric, then there's reasons why you have to follow these certain rules. Right, and they, they only had so much thread really to use. Right. So you, you had to be very economical with the way it would work. And if, if you're backing up across yourself trying to, 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 to make an X and you're going this way and then this way, and then going to the next one, you're using twice as much thread. And twice as much thread. So the book goes all the way from, you know, from, uh, from, from the beginning of how to pick things up all the way through doing the most advanced projects in the book, which are mm -hmm. things like the garments and, these, and the quilts and yeah. the wall hanging. Yeah. Sounds like a very thorough book that everyone We think so. Yeah. <laughs> we think so. Yeah, we, we, we put a lot of time in on it. So it took, it took over a year hopefully, to write. Hopefully. It took over a year to write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people can still take classes from you online, right? Yes, yes. absolutely. In fact, we just finished filming a new class yesterday. Mm -hmm. It right. will be available online sometime in the next, in the next month, month or, or so. so. Mm -hmm. yep. um, we do have, uh, we are teaching, well, we're teaching tomorrow mm -hmm. and this weekend. <laughs> uh, we teach for uh, Bainbridge Artisans Resource Network. Yep. It's over here on Bainbridge Island. It's an artist okay. collective. Just uh, outside of Seattle. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just on the, one of the islands out here. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing virtual classes for them because, of course, we are sh we are sheltering in place as well. And what we, we are teaching them is? Sashiko. <laughs> this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we just, the, just announced yesterday the new Stitches at Home. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be teaching our kind of, kind of the equivalent of our camp workshop. Right. Mm -hmm. Where we make the, the tote bag. We make a borrowed tote bag. Right. Oh, cool. And everybody, mm -hmm. get, everybody gets their kits. And uh, it's got all the thread and the needles and the glue and the fabric. Yeah, all the stuff yeah. that goes with it. Yeah. And then they just use their own scrap fabric to make the actual bag. Mm -hmm. They get they get a bag base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and then they get these these scrap fabrics, which they could definitely should be looking at some yeah grab mm -hmm. bags from well, Trigger. I think right. I should sign up for that class because this, oh, you this, totally this, should. This virtual learning thing is like this silver lining of now yes. anywhere they could take this class. And then we're going to do a virtual book signing. Yes, we'll do a mm -hmm. little party like this, and people can come in and purchase a book, and we see the purchase order come in. We'll sign it live right there on Zoom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's great. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Again, you guys, I can drink a margarita and not wear pants. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way of knowing. There is just oh, no way of knowing. There isn't, unless the camera falls down. And that's oh, just well, that's not yeah. going to happen. That's kind of my job to make sure that that doesn't happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> no promises. I have had such a good time talking to you guys. Oh, always and, a great time talking yes, to we you. Love and, thank, and thank you for having us on. And I'll keep thank feeding you fabric. Well, designs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and the fabric. Thank you for the yes, fabric. It thank is, you. It means a lot to us to have a high quality product like Cherrywood mm -hmm. available at our fingertips because right. it really does allow our creativity to spread mm -hmm. in ways that we didn't even, we hadn't even conceived of initially. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Well, that's wonderful. You're very welcome and keep creating. Thanks thank you, so Carla. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs>Aren't those guys a hoot? I just love them. Um, we always have great fun when we get together and um, they are just great ambassadors for Cherrywood. They took over my Instagram account today. Maybe you have seen a couple of those posts. And yeah, I hope they really inspired you to um, play with scraps, to try Sashiko. Um, now that you've seen beautiful pictures of that vest and all the gorgeous colors that they put into it remember these kits are on sale tonight 10 percent off for the sashiko vest kit and it does come in two different sizes um, the small to large kit is normally 100 dollars um, for the fabric kit but tonight it's on sale for 90 and then you order the pattern separately and that is a digital pdf file and you can order that from us on our website, or you can go to the um, uh, shibaguys.com website and check out their pattern. That's where you can pre-order their book, um, see where they're uh, teaching. And now that they're doing all this online teaching, you can take any of their classes, including um, knitting and crocheting. And um, just do check them out because they're very talented and have uh, lots to share. So some more ideas for what to do with strips of fabric from these mops, which are on sale tonight for $8, eight bucks for all this fabric. So I already told you about how you can make the fabric bowls out of the um, clothesline, clothesline baskets. Um, a lot of people are making those, but they look so gorgeous in cherry wood because they look like clay or leather or raffia. And here's another little basket that I made. Um, I started playing with kind of what the Shiba guy was doing. They were sewing the strips together, um, you know, long lengthways. And I thought, um, let the ragged ends, what if I sewed down the middle of the strips just onto a background fabric? So I worked on a, a flat surface and um, just laid some pieces did a gentle curve and kind of um, concentric, kind of like echo quilting. So you can see the color of the background fabric coming through, but these are just basically top stitched onto the back. And then I just formed it into a, a simple pouch kind of bowl. And, um, yeah, but I, can, I really want to try this on a jacket. Um, I think that would be a gorgeous texture because it's not uh, very thick. You know, it lays down flat. But to get that natural little, um, a little bit of fraying on the edges. And like the Sheepa guy said, the cherry wood does not fray. I mean, this is about all the fraying you'll get. The nice tight weave of the fabric keeps it uh, very sturdy and great for artsy stuff like this. So uh, fiber, any kind of fiber arts project. And I was... Um, I'm in a group of fiber artists that we kind of challenge ourselves to do, um, you know, push ourselves and try different methods. And we got, um, decided to do a challenge and took pages from a book and we each chose a photo and over 
a photo that's an overhead um, aerial view of Earth. And I chose this photo, which is a um, tobacco field in Mexico. And of course, that gradation caught my eye immediately. What this is, is they're, they're drying out the tobacco leaves. And of course, they start out green. So that at the top, those are the freshest leaves. And the farther down you get, the older they are. And they've been baking in the sun and turn into these beautiful um, goldy, rusty colors. So I interpreted that in fabric, and this is the result. So I picked out greens and golds and rusts and uh, down to a dark brown. And I simply uh, tried to kind of get the feel of how they were hanging. So they are stitched down here with top stitching, but in between it's all loose. So it's, I wanted it to be like the tobacco plant is hanging and I used black thread in between and the, um, these strips are kind of hanging in between. And then when I got to the end, I just kind of let these lay loose because of the, the nature of the project. I put it on a black uh, felt background just to keep it sturdy. And then below here is some stitching, um, basically top stitching kind of to look like the plants growing in the field. But to have all these scraps at your fingertips, like they talked about in the video, you can, um, your creativity just flows so much better when you've got stuff like this in front of you. When you see colors, they speak to you. They tell you what to do. It, you don't have to work so hard at trying to figure out what to do. Um, it's right there to play with and to layer and to get your fingers feeling it and your eyes loving it and it all comes together. And it's really nice to have lots of colors in your stash. So mops are perfect. Grab bags, that's another great reason to have a couple of grab bags. So you, um, get colors that maybe you normally wouldn't have picked out in the store um, on purpose, but you've got them there. Um, another project I've done with, this is mo mostly scraps, not necessarily strips, but have you seen these or have you made these? Um, they're lace scarves, basically. And I used a water-soluble stabilizer. Solvi is a, a great product. They have some uh, stabilizers that are sticky and you can cut up all your snippets of fabric lay it down on the solvi um, you can cut up little fibers or some pieces of yarn and any kind of textiles and then cover it again with another piece of solvi water soluble stabilizer and then you sew um, with decorative threads because it's going to show you sew up and down um, the whole length and it's in those two layers of solvi together and all of these little bits of cherry wood were trapped in between so i went up and down and crosswise back and forth back and forth back and forth i have some metallic thread um, i actually cut these little snippets with the pinking shears so that the edges were even a little more uh, raggedy and interesting and then once I've sewn over it enough where I know I've caught most of the bits, then you douse it in water. You put it in a bowl of water, the solvi rinses away, and you're left with just the lacy bits of fibers. Um, this was from a gradation leftover uh, uh, fabric from a vest. And so I've got eight beautiful colors. And now I can wear this, this with the vest and I'm all color coordinated. So again, that's a Solvi water soluble stabilizer with cherry wood bits um, captured in between with stitching. Um, yeah, so once again, the mops are on sale tonight, normally $12, and we've got five different color choices to choose from. Do note that what you see me holding may not be exactly your mop because these are kind of like our grab bags. You kind of get what you get, but we have divided them into, um, I believe this one is called spicy velvet and brights and lights and neutrals. 
So um, take a chance with these. <laughs> they sell out at quilt shows. We have them hanging on the uh, outside of the booth and there's people who come like right away and they pick out like three or four of them and they just take off because it's a great deal. A nice amount of fabric. Um, it's probably about a yard of fabric for eight bucks and this is hand dyed fabric from Cherrywood. Check out our website cherrywoodfabrics.com and go to the live tab and while you're there you're going to see some um, over dyed fabric from Wendy Richardson. You're going to see some single batch colors that we still have some left. There are three colors that um, I've only dyed one batch and may not be able to dye them again because of the formula. So we've got a beautiful evening blue, we've got a coastal blue, and a tomato. And tomato it has a little bit of um, yellow. Um, it's a really deep red orange. And the, um, the evening blue is a different than our indigo, but it would be a beautiful, um, like you saw, the Sheba guys love indigo. This also is another beautiful background, or it just kind of pulls any colors together, sometimes almost better than black. So those are um, still on sale on the live tab. And I hope that you enjoyed this color explosion video. And do check out the Sheba guys. Um, like once again, they are Cherrywood ambassadors, and we are proud to have them using Cherrywood and giving us all ideas of what to do. So join me next week, Thursday night at 7 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live, uh, Central Time. And have a good week. Thanks.